Irish guy, and everybody seems to think that I've been a grumpy goose this month, just talking about the transfers that I don't like. Well, okay then. Considering you all think that I now think of Simon Cowell, then in today's video, I'm gonna take a look at every Premier League club and find one transfer for each team this month, which I love. Right, let's go. Oh, and by the way, if you're here, hit subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Pretty much it, really, trying to get 200K? Absolute legends. Back into the video. Arsenal, Julian Timber. Now, we all know that I enjoy seeing Declan Rice become a 100 million pound superstar. The same way the ugly sisters probably enjoyed watching Cinderella getting off with that prince behind a pizza shop. I mean, that transfer honestly made my blood boil to such a degree. But I felt like I just drunk a pint of lava from a doom. But this transfer is the antidote. Seeing Arsenal tie a 40 million pound deal for Justin David Norman Timber. Ah, see, there's more names written on his passports than in the back of a postman's van. But this guy is a quality buy. He's 22 years old and versatile, can play either center back or right back, and it's refreshing to see him wind up somewhere that's not Man United, because we all know that Ayrton Hag has such an obsession with Ajax, that he's probably got actual spies waiting in a van outside the club's complex, ready to offer sweets to the under 12 team. So I'm sure seeing him line up in an Arsenal kiss for Tanay, that will probably feel about as natural as seeing his mum get married to a dog. But great signing though, although, Timber is primarily a centre back who could also play right back. Yeah, Arsenal already got one of those and he costs 50 million pounds. Genuine question. Is Mikel Arteta already bored of Ben White? Seeing a younger mod like Timber walk through the door. Ah, oh, White must feel so insecure. Like a teenage girl that turns up to prom night with acne all over her face. Aston Villa, Yuri Tielemans. Look, I've already moaned about Aston Villa buying both Pau Torres and Musa Diaby. Although I do feel like I was probably being a bit of a sour spoiled sport. Especially about the first one. Me being so indignant that the papers told us that Torres would join a Champions League level club. Only if he just settled for being the modern day Richard Dunn. Oh, come on, Irish guy of the past. It's not that deep. So what is left is a freebie capture of Yuri Tielemans. Someone who for the last 18 months has been an unmotivated sludge puppet at Leicester City. Honestly, for the last year or so, watching him solemnly strut around the pitch like he's at Aunt Maggie's funeral with a huge frown on his face. He was like the anti Ronaldinho. Tielemans at Leicester. He made playing football look about as much fun as picking up rubbish at the airport. So I don't love this transfer. But if Ray Emery can re-energize this guy, then don't forget, he is just 26, and he does have 60 Belgian caps during the golden generation, and on his day is the best central midfielder Villa would have had since Fabian Delph, Bournemouth, Milos Kirkes. This is an ambitious buy. I know, I know I sound like a football hipster. I know, I probably look like I stink of a low-carb vegan breakfast. You probably all think I've now got Mumford and Sons tattooed on my back, but Milos Kirkes is a highly rated wonder kid. A 19-year-old Hungary international left back who's already been on the books of AC Milan, scouted by Paolo Maldini. You know, the greatest left back to ever live. He absolutely excelled at Isar Alkmaar in the Eredivisie last season and was linked with a bunch of big clubs. So to snap him up for 15 million pounds, little old Bournemouth, a club so unassuming and small, I'd imagine, I mean, go back 15 years or so and the club were in such ruins and strapped for cash, they probably couldn't even afford training gear, just using dead seagulls as training cones. But lads, this summer they have bought Kirkes, formerly of AC Milan. And Roman Favre, once heavily linked with PSG, and Justin Clivert, who Manchester United used to sniff around even before their Ajax obsession. And I have already said that I think Clivert will be a big bag of ice cream that tastes like mud. Well, Kirk is. I love this deal. Brentford, Mark Flecken. Yeah, here we've got Brentford signing a third-year-old Netherlands international goalkeeper, Mark Flecken, whose um, middle names are Maria and Hubertus. Uh, I'd say this guy probably gets laughed out of the airport at passport control. But as this man was a late bloomer who was recently Freiburg number one in the Bundesliga for a couple of years and clearly played well enough to get on the Holland team. So for just 11 million euros, this could be a really clever buy. Brighton, James Milner. I love this transfer. I absolutely do. James Milner, I've already said it. But this stat, it blows my mind. Not only has this guy been playing virtually week in, week out in the Premier League since 2002, that's 21 years, but this is the fifth transfer of his career. And with every move, he always joined a club who were in the Europa League, which I find so delightfully symmetrical and satisfying. I mean, he didn't transfer to Leeds United, no, but even still, in his debut season in the first team, guess what? They were in the Europa League too. This is his sixth 
different Europa League club. Now, don't get me wrong, he, um, he never won the competition. In 2002, Leeds crashed out to Malaga. In 2005, Newcastle literally won 10 European games. Drew won. He must have been dreaming of a European trophy in his debut season. But now, they were squashed like a spider against Sporting Lisbon. Lads, in Graham soon as his first season as manager at St. James's Park. Newcastle won 15 cup games. That is an underrated stat. Anyway, in 2009, Aston Villa were dumped up by CSK Moscow. In 2011, his Man City were knocked up by Dynamo Kiev. In 2015, Milner painfully lost the final to Liverpool against Sevilla. So he's always had horrible luck in this competition. So if anyone actually expects Brighton to lift this trophy in Dublin, you're probably about as deluded as KSI. Yeah, you're not beating up Tommy Fury, mate. But still, the leadership, the experience, the professionalism. To get all that on a free. Well done, Brighton. Burnley, Dara O'Shea. Why wouldn't this make me happy? Dara O'Shea's career has been saved. A 24-year-old Ireland international centre-back who came through the ranks of West Brom and sort of had his career wobbled by a relegation in his second season in the team. But Burnley have saved him. Signing him for just £7 million. Lads, this is an Irish defender learning under Vincent Company. One of the greatest centre-backs the Premier League has ever seen. Of course this makes me happy. I hope O'Shea does everything in his power to take advantage of this move. I don't know, maybe follow your manager to the toilet. Spying him when he's eating his porridge in the canteen. I don't care if you suddenly do look so creepy everyone calls you Dahmer. I'm excited to see another Irish centre back at Burnley. I mean, after the club got rid of Nathan Collins, Kevin Long, Jimmy Dunn and James Clark, this one just feels right. Chelsea, Angelo, Gabriel. Yeah, Chelsea haven't really signed that many players at all. But my favourite deal, I don't know, maybe the £13 million capture of Angelo, Gabriel from Santos. I mean, everyone always gets excited about buying the next Brazilian wonder kid with huge skill. And especially when they come from Santos. Everyone prays that they're getting the next Neymar. And to be fair, they've thrown this kid into the first team picture. I mean, he was absolutely ripping Welsh rejects apart in that friendly against Wrexham. A game which probably caused Deadpool to nervously vomit in his hands. But yeah, hopefully Gabriel will grow up to be world class. I mean, he's the youngest Santos player to ever appear in the Copa Libertadores. Just two months after his 16th birthday. Lads, this is a club who literally had Pele on their books. And he was winning World Cups at 17. And this kid was younger than him? Wow. Crystal Palace, Jefferson Lerma. Yeah, Chris Palace have barely done anything yet. I don't know, getting Jefferson Lerma on a free from Bournemouth? A 28-year-old defensive midfielder. Someone who was once a Bournemouth club record signing for 30 million euros. Now they're able to sign him for less than a dairy milk bar. Yeah, not bad, I guess. Everton, Arnold Dajuma. If I was an Everton fan, I would probably look at Arnold Dajuma's presence in an Everton shirt. And yeah, I would snarl like an angry beast. I would feel so wounded. Like a wolf who just had a vasectomy. Because Everton were supposed to be signing Dan Juma on loan from Villarreal in January. Only for Tottenham to hijack the deal. Essentially doing to Everton what Chelsea and Liverpool both did to them. When stealing Willian and Luis Diaz out of their grip. Considering Spurs I never really played Dan Juma, I'm sure this was just a power move. Just them wanting to be the bully for once after those Willian and Diaz nightmares. Dan Juma is a decent-ish winger with a knife for goal. I mean from 2020 to 2022. He scored 33 goals across two seasons for Bournemouth and Villarreal. I mean back then he was getting linked to the move to Liverpool. Listen, Everton fans probably silently hate this one because he did snub them eight months ago but does that mean that this transfer is destined to fail not at all because i remember loic revy shaking hands with alan pardew and agreeing to join newcastle from marseille in january 2013. joey barton was literally tweeting that his marseille teammate was off to the tune and then um revy decided to disappear and ran off to QPR instead. Clearly he had old and wingy fever, desperately signing off a relegation battle instead of joining a team who are in the Europa League. Then he gets relegated and comes crawling back to Newcastle in the summer. You would assume if that man never truly wanted to join the club anyway and that they were his second choice behind QPR, then he would now be an unmotivated lump in a black and white shirt. No, um, 14 goals in his only season. Uh, he played so well, he earned a move to Chelsea. So similarly, Dan Juma will be quality as well. Fulham, William. Th th does this count? William was technically unemployed there, did a medical at Nottingham Forest, but just like when he ditched Tottenham 10 years ago, just um, left them after the medical and went to West London. Now he's just back at Fulham. I mean, why? Was he bored? I'm convinced he just likes to lead on clubs for attention. Like a woman who constantly gets men to buy her drinks before sneaking out the back door to KFC. But yeah, I mean, good. Re-signing for Fulham, I guess. Liverpool Dominic Solisby. I've already spoken about this at length in that Liverpool transfer video, but Dominic Solisby, just look at his highlights on YouTube. He is a freak. 
an absolute genetic freak. A young man who's built like a male model and also has frightening technique and skill. An absolute RB Leipzig midfield monster who I promise you is worth every penny of the 60 million pounds that Liverpool have spent. And this is a statement. Liverpool still being able to sign this European star when they're not even in the Champions League shows you the status of the club. It reminds me of Manchester United were still able to buy Angel Di Maria when they weren't even in the Europa League. Solis boy is going to be absolutely terrific in this Liverpool team. And I don't know about you, but I can't wait to see him in the Premier League. Luton Town, Chaduzio Benny. Lads, this transfer came so out of the blue. And I love it. Chaduzio Benny is a 26 year old Ireland international winger who I have been raving about for years. This former Cork City and Limerick white man. A year ago, he just helped Rotherham get promoted to the championship. And this, this is what I said in my predictions video. Well, I'm expecting a superstar season from Irish forward Chaduzio Benny. Ozzy, he's going to explode with a 15 goal season before getting snapped up next summer for 20 million pounds by. Well, well, well! Yeah, you all thought I was just some biased, deluded bloke. But I called it. I said that this Everton and Brentford reject would get a move to the Premier League. And guess what? Snapped up by Luton Town. This is a guy who Brentford threw away as if he was just a rotten milkshake with fingernails in the cream. So I cannot wait to see him prove Brentford wrong. Rip up the league and become our most exciting winger since Damien Duff. Man City, Josco Vardiol. This is like when Liverpool signed Virgil van Dijk. This is that big a transfer. I know people try and turn Josco Vardiol into a meme after he was tormented by Messi at the World Cup, but I'm sorry. He was 20 years old. What was van Dijk doing at 20? Playing in Holland and um... Oh, uh, actually, uh, I'm, so I'm sorry now. This is actually a hideous example because literally the day of van Dijk's 20th birthday, he was um, admitted to hospital with severe kidney poisoning, lost nearly half a stone, couldn't walk for two weeks, and the hospital actually made him sign a will. Oh, uh, th th this is grim. But, lad, Vardial is still the next best defender in the world. A 90 million pound buy from RB Leipzig. That is a lot of money, yes, but he's still only 21. And arguably every bit as good as Van Dijk when he moved to Anfield. Think of the frightening possibilities. To get a world-class centre back when he is this young. This is like when Man City bought Vincent Company. Although his monstrous teenage hype when he was a centre back at Anderlecht. Being linked to Real Madrid and Man United at 18. That had sort of paused a bit when he became a Europa League level midfielder with Hamburg. So the hype wasn't that hugely move to Eddie had, but still, what a transfer this is. Man United, Andre Onana. Don't get me wrong, I like the Mason Mount transfer too. Man United's business in this transfer window has been ridiculously saucy so far, but Andre Onana is beyond refreshing. Lads, we have seen Manchester City and Liverpool move on to the next level using absolute Brazilian ballers between the sticks. Men just so confident with the ball at their feet, they could probably do 100 keepy uppies whilst blindfolded and standing on the bus. Seeing cumbersome old David Ahea by contrast. Oh, I mean, it's been like turning up to school. Everyone's got fresh, cool new haircuts. Well, you've still got a bowl cut and dried earwax on your cheek. Yeah, everyone's soon gonna throw their sandwiches at you at lunch. But finally, Man United now have an actual adequate ball-playing goalkeeper between the sticks after tying up a 43 million pound move from Inter Milan. And Onana has also played at both Ajax and Barcelona. The two schools of Johan Cruyff. Of course he's good with the ball on his feet. You know what lads, about time. This man is gonna completely revolutionize your club. I don't wanna excite you too much, but look at the instant impacts of Ederson and Allison. When Ederson joined Man City, the club had just recorded 78 points in the league. Yeah, by the end of his debut season, they had 100. Ederson improved Man City by 22 points. When Allison joined Liverpool, similarly, they just put a meek 75 points on the board. In his first season, Liverpool finished with 97 points. Allison also improved Liverpool by 22 points. Manchester United just finished with 75 points too. They've signed Onana. Another? 22 points? Newcastle Sandro Tonali. Look, I think Newcastle essentially trading in a world star like Alan San Maximin for Harvey Barnes is so utterly disgusting. I bet like swapping a five star sirloin steak for a packet of warm Skittles that I just spent the entire day in your granddad's sweaty shirt pocket. But at least a 60 million pound move for Sandro Tonali is ambitious. A 23 year old Italian superstar. Sure, he's probably a bit miserable that he's dream AC Milan career. It was just limited to three seasons. He probably does feel such a bitter taste in his mouth. Like he just swallowed a whole bag of lemons. But I reckon a midfield three of him, Joe and Bruno Gamares. That is Champions League worthy. And it's going to be utterly delicious to watch. Nottingham Forest, Manny Norquez. Manny Norquez. 18 years old. Was at Old Trafford for five years. Also represented the Man City Academy. As well as Nottingham Forest, Sheffield United, Grimsby, and um, 
Dino's Soccer Academy. Well, anyway, I get the feeling that the guy who runs that probably sleeps in a caravan. Sheffield United and his Ben Slimani. Yeah, Sheffield United haven't really done much at all. I don't know, they just snapped up Tunisian international fielder and his Ben Slimani after over 100 games for Bromby. I don't know. All I know about Slimani is that he spent his entire life in Denmark. Born and bred in that nation, has bounced around nine different Danish clubs. And yeah, weirdly, last Christmas, played against Denmark at the World Cup. That must have been confusing for him. Tottenham Guglielmo Vicario. I haven't really been impressed by much of Tottenham's transfer of business, so I don't know. Guglielmo Vicario is a promising 26-year-old goalie. They've just snatched up from Empoli on a five-year deal. I don't know much about him, but to go from Serie D to Tottenham in a few years, fair play Vicario. West Ham Sean Moore. I don't know. West Ham have just signed up a 17-year-old winger, Sean Moore from Cliftonville. Christ, well, he was born in the summer of 2005. I literally remember where I was watching Premier League games that month. I was literally sitting in an Irish pub, watching Arsenal beat Newcastle United the day after this bloke was born. But yeah, I mean, how old am I? Because that newborn baby has now just joined West Ham. But he's Irish, so... Could only be good news, right? Wolves Matt Doherty. I'm just really Matt Doherty is back where he belongs. I know he was tempted by the bright lights of Tottenham and Atletico Madrid. But, I mean, they are both unhelpful moves. I'm just happy now that at 31 years of age, Doherty has experienced it now at bigger clubs. Realised he fits in there like a big bag of duck vomit. And he's back now, rehomed at Wolves. Where he's already spent 10 years of his life. Considering he's still one of Ireland's most important players, I am relieved. Because Robbie Brady was once one of my nation's most important players. But um, then he lost his job at Burnley. Had to wait five months to get another one. And even that was just a championship gig with Bournemouth where he barely played until the following summer he was forced the embarrassment of having to go on trial at Preston. And now he can't even get in the Ireland team. I thought that was Doherty's bleak future too. So honestly, like a worried mum who finally sees her son get a job, I'm relieved. Anyway, that's the video. Let me know in the comments what do you think. Okay, what transfer makes you happy? Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to give a like, subscribe as always. I'll talk to you in a while.